Welcome to Improper Integrals. In this video, we're going to talk a lot about what improper integrals are and some examples of problems. So take the standard definite integral, and now let's change that upper limit to infinity. Now ask yourself what this definite integral asks. Well, take a function like e to the x, which looks like this, and essentially we're asking ourselves here, what is the area from 0 to infinity, let's say. And if your guess was infinity, in this case, you would actually be correct because it's on an infinite interval, an infinite area. But not for this case. See, this is the function 1 over x squared, and from 1 to infinity, this function actually has an area. It actually converges, in fact. The series for this function also converges. And we'll talk about that in another video, but this is really asking for the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared. And we know that it has an area now, but what is it? Well, the first thing we need to do is rewrite this improper integral as a limit problem. So we're going to take that upper limit infinity and we're going to change it to some parameter. Then we're going to solve our definite integral as we normally would do the standard steps. And at the very end, you're going to have a limit problem and this limit will tend to 1. And so with that new answer, we can now safely say that the integral from 1 to infinity actually is 1. It has an area of 1 and it's finite. Take another case where we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the negative x squared dx. In this integral, we will do the same steps of doing this as a limit problem. So take that parameter t again. Solve this integral as we normally would now with the standard techniques of integration. We have a u substitution problem here with u as x squared and du as 2x dx. Rearrange this however you wish. People do u substitution slightly differently. This is the way I would do it. That upper limit does indeed change to t squared, but it doesn't really matter. At the very end, you'll see it all comes back together. And at the very end, when we get this result, we're going to take a limit as t goes to infinity, and this will indeed tend to 1 over 2. So once again, this integral does have a finite area, even if it's on an infinite interval. And this last case is a little bit different. We have the integral from 0 to 1, but that 0 is at a discontinuous point for this function. There's a vertical asymptote. So in this time, we're not just going to take the limit as something goes to infinity, we're going to take the limit as b goes to zero from the right, because it's in the bottom limit. We'll talk about it in a second. And because of this, this also is an improper integral. There's a discontinuous point. That's another example of it. And we will solve this integral as we normally would. Once you get to this point here, you will notice that unfortunately the limit as b goes to zero for ln of b will tend to negative infinity so this integral does not have a finite area it diverges even if it's on a short interval there are two cases that we have talked about today so let's review them the first case is when one or both of the limits of integration are at some type of infinity if they are both at infinity and negative infinity split it up into two integrals in the second case here we have a discontinuity on the upper or lower limits of integration in that case we also have to rewrite it as a limit problem specifically let's say we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x well that bottom zero here the lower limit is a discontinuity so we have to rewrite it as a limit now, if the removable or non-removable discontinuity exists at the lower limit, we take the limit as something goes from the right. But if we have a case like this, where we have the integral from negative 1 to 0 of that same function, well, now the discontinuity exists at the upper limit. And in this case, we would take the limit as t goes to 0 from the left. So there you have it, guys. These are the two cases here that you're going to have to really focus on. And that's it. That's all you need to know for improper integrals.